Welcome to today's episode of the Mindset Mentor Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Dial, and if you have not yet done so, hit that subscribe button so that you never miss another podcast episode. And if you're out there and you love this podcast and you want some extra tips and tricks on how to improve your mindset and also how to improve your life, go ahead and go to mondayemail.com right now. Once again, mondayemail.com. I send out an email every single Monday with my tips and tricks on how to improve yourself, how to improve your life, and things that I'm working on to improve my life so that you can actually get some extra tips and tricks and improve your life as well. Today, I'm going to be giving you eight things that successful people do that unsuccessful people don't do. Now, before I go into it, I want to just say this. Success means something different for every single person. For some people, that means making $10 million. For some people, that means becoming the best person they could be. For some people, it means like helping their children become the best people they could be. For some people, that means that they want to help the world. For some people, that means that they just want to have an incredible relationship. What I'm going to talk about today is how to improve and become successful for whatever success means to you. Before I dive into those tips, what I want to say is you have to define success for yourself. Whatever that means, define it. Cool? Let's dive in. The first thing that I find, and this is not across the board, I'm speaking in generalizations, but I'm saying like 90, 95% of successful people will do these things. Are there people that are outliers? Of course, not every single person is going to be exactly the same. But the one thing that I know among very, very successful people is they wake up early. Now, I'm not saying I think it's actually kind of crazy to wake up at like four o'clock in the morning unless that's your thing. You know, I know like Mark Wahlberg goes to bed at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. when his kids go to bed and then wakes up at 4 a.m. or 3 a.m. or something like that. That makes sense because he's getting seven, eight hours of sleep. But they wake up earlier than most people do. They don't wake up at eight right when their alarm's going off, rush in the shower, take something, you know, a a snack, a bar on the way to work, eat it, and just be rushing all over the place. They wake up earlier, 85 to 90% of successful people that I know, and when I was researching this, wake up early. Like Richard Branson, multi-billionaire, wakes up at 5.30 in the morning. That's not too early. Tim Cook, wakes up at 4.30 in the morning. That's a little bit early, but some people like waking up. If I don't wake up at 4.30 in the morning, let me say that. Six o'clock is the time that I like waking up. Uh, because that gives me a couple hours before I actually start having to dive into my business. But Tim Cook, who is the CEO of Apple, wakes up at 4.30. Howard Schultz, the guy who started Starbucks, wakes up at 4.30. The key to it is not the time they wake up. The key to it is waking up before they need to so that they can work on themselves and have time to themselves, maybe even some just silence to themselves, enjoy a cup of coffee while sitting in their living room and thinking about life and thinking about how they want to improve, maybe journaling, maybe reading. But the key is being proactive in their day versus being reactive in their day. You know, if you watch TV for an hour before you go to bed, just stop watching TV and wake up an hour earlier and see what happens. Because one of the things I see with people is a lot of people like to blame time as the reason why they're not successful. They like to blame externally versus blame on themselves. When you blame external, you just take all control of your life away and you say, ah, there's nothing that I can do about it. Time, I don't have enough time, right? Every single person gets 24 hours. And the thing that that you have to realize is that you have to be the person that's in control of your schedule. Ask yourself, do you wake up early enough to have you time? You time to be able to do whatever it is you want to do. It's different for everybody. Maybe you just want to sit in silence and have coffee, like I said. Maybe you want to read. Maybe you want to journal. Maybe you want to go for a walk. Maybe you want to do some yoga. Maybe you want to get a full intense workout. Whatever it is that you want to do. Maybe you want to meditate for a while and start getting better at that. Whatever it is that you want to do, do you give yourself enough time in the morning to have time to fill your cup before you go outside and take on the day? That's the thing I think is important about waking up early. It's not just about like waking up early for the sake of waking up early. It's about waking up earlier so that you have time to improve yourself before you go out and face the world. So that's the first thing that I notice. The second thing is that they read a lot, like a lot, a lot. I was in an event this uh, two weeks ago and uh, Patrick Bet David was there and Patrick Bet David just sold his business for a few hundred million dollars. And he said one of the best piece of advice that he ever got was from one of his first mentors. And he said, what is the biggest key that you can give me for being massively successful and being ahead of everybody else? And he said, most people will never read. If you could just get the habit of reading down in four, five, six, 10 years, you'll be light years ahead of everybody else no one will be able to compete with you in whatever it is that you're doing because you have such a base of knowledge that you're light years ahead of everybody else. The average CEO, and every time I say this on my my Instagram, people think it's bullshit, but you can Google it. The average CEO 
reads about 60 books per year. That's crazy. The average CEO reads 60 books per year. That's more than one per week. But what's crazy about that is that 80%, the crazier on the other side, the crazier part about it is that 80% of American families didn't buy a book last year. And so if you want to be light years ahead and further along than the average person, just start reading no matter what it is. I would recommend don't read fiction, read nonfiction so that you can be improving, but read whatever if you want to work on your mindset. There's many amazing books that I could recommend on mindset. If you want to learn about business, there's many great books you can learn about that. If you want to be a, be a great parent, there's many books you could read upon that. And so read every day, 10 pages a book. It also, just so you know, reading, uh, psychologists found that reading fends off neurodegenerative diseases like dementia, Alzheimer's. And so reading and growing and learning actually helps your brain stay healthy for a long time. And so ask yourself, how often do you read? Should you read more? Would that help you hit your goals and get to where you want to be? That's number two. Number three, successful people, what I have found is the majority of them exercise consistently. Does that mean that every single successful person exercises every single day? No, but I think there is a mind-body connection that we get away from and we need to get better at. If your body is better, it will make your mind better and it'll make your life better. All too often, people just focus on, I want to grow this business and I want to be a multimillionaire. And then they don't have the energy that they want. They're tired. They're not taking control of themselves and the way that they, their body's working. The way that I see it is like, I'm about to go to war in business and life, whatever it is. I want to make sure that this physical meat suit that I happen to be inside of is that it's best shape that it could possibly be to have as much energy as possible because energy Time is important. Energy is more important because energy makes the time that I put into something more potent, makes me more productive, makes me more focused. And so if I can take care of this meat suit that is Rob Dial, I can make sure that I have the energy to put in the hours I need to put in and be able to outperform anybody that I might be competing against. So the third thing is exercise consistently. Ask yourself, how often are you working out? How often are you taking care of your body? How often are you doing yoga, stretching, giving yourself time to just literally be in this physical body of yours? So that's number three. Number four, it is proven over and over and over and over and over again. Successful people write down their goals. There's a study that was done, Harvard in the 1970s, that found out that 3% of their students that were graduating with their MBA, 3% of them wrote down their goals. 10 years later, they followed up with all of the people that were graduating that year. Again, 10 years later, they found out that that 3% was 10 times more successful than the other 97% combined. Why is that? Think about that for a second. Why? Why is just the physical act of writing your goals on a piece of paper beneficial? Well, number one, it makes it real. It makes it physical. It makes it exist in this universe. It is now real. And when it is, I always say this over and over again. I say this all the time on my Instagram and reels and all the stuff that I put out there. When it's on paper, it can be planned. Very rarely do we successfully plan something in our heads. And so if we can take the things from our heads, put them down and say, this is my goal for next year. This is my goal for this month. This is my goal for this week. We can go, okay, this, even if it's just my goal for today, this is my goal for today. And I can see that goal for today. I can say, okay, what do I need to do to make this happen? What do I need to move in my schedule to make sure I put the, the amount of time that I need to in to make this important? And I can get really clear, number one, on my goals, number two, on what I need to do, and number three, the date that I want to have it hit by. I can write down and say, I want to do this by the end of this year. I want to lose 17 pounds by the end of this year. I want to end up making saving $10,000 by the end of this year. Whatever it is, Take your goals out of your head, put them on paper so they're real, they're physical, they exist in this universe, they're right there in front of you, and then you can start to plan out how to actually execute on those. So number four is they always write down their goals. Number five is that they have mentors. This one is ridiculously important. I can think of so many people that have been mentors in my life that have helped me get to where I am. Like no man is an island. Nobody just becomes successful by themselves. There's statistics that have been found that the average millionaire has seven mentors before they actually make that million dollars. Why? Because what you do is you can shorten your learning curve. If you can find a mentor that's 20 years ahead of you, like even this way, if we just say, let's take money out of it. And let's say success to you is having an incredible relationship with your spouse. Can you find somebody 
who could be a mentor in your relationship, somebody who has a marriage that you want, you look up to them, the husband and wife have this incredible relationship, they have an incredible family that they've built, you can take 20 years of their knowledge, 30 years of their knowledge, and shorten it and learn from them. Learn from them, their successes, learn from their failures. If you wanna grow a business, there's somebody who has grown a business similar to yours. It can even be different than yours, but they know what potential, you know, between zero to a million dollars, there's a lot different challenges than there is from 1 million to 10 million. Then there is from 10 million to 20 million, from 20 to 100 million. And they can take their 20 years of knowledge and shorten it into two years for, for you. And you could have a paid mentor, you could have a free mentor. I always get asked this, like, what, what's the benefit of paid? What's the benefit of free? I think paid mentors are great. I think free mentors are great. I've had free mentors, but I've always gotten more results from someone that I've paid to be my mentor. Why? Because when you pay someone to be your mentor, they feel responsible for your, if, if they're a good person, they feel responsible for your success and your failure. They have skin in the game. They take it more serious. They want to actually make sure they help you succeed by getting there. Free mentors, they care, but they just don't care as much. But I've had many free mentors that have just been friends of mine that have taught me things and conversations that I've, that I've heard from them of just like, oh, I really appreciate that thing that they said. But I think that both of them are great, but I think that paid mentors usually end up being better. So number five is they always have mentors. Number six, some of the most successful people that I know are people that really believe in themselves a lot. And one of the reasons why, and this is the actual tip, that they believe in themselves a lot is because they actually have very positive self-talk. They weren't born with positive self-talk, but they became intentional about the way that they talk to themselves. And, you know, if you think of it, if you think of it like, uh, the way I like to think of it is, is, is think of a garden, for instance, right? Like over to my right, I have one tiny garden. Over to my left, I have one tiny garden. Let's just say it's not even a garden. It's a plant. To my right, I have a plant. To my left, I have a plant. And I can take the water, if I have a bucket of water, I can take that bucket of water and I can pour it into a plant, right? On the bucket on my right, I'm going to pour in water. And I'm going to pour it. I'm going to take care of it. I'm going to nurture it. And I'm going to make sure it gets the water that it needs. I'm going to make sure that it gets the sun that it needs. I'm going to make sure it's in the right environment. If it gets too cold outside, I'm going to make sure that I bring it inside. And I'm going to be intentional about the one on the right. The one on the left, no, just let it do what it's going to do. Which one do you think is more likely to grow to its full capacity? The one on the right. The one that I take the time, the intention, the one where I try to make sure that it has the right environment, has the right water, has the right sun. When it's too cold, I bring it inside. The one on the right has a better chance of succeeding. The way I like to think of your mind is, is like those plants. I'm going to put positive energy and the, the, the quote unquote, the water and the analogy I'm giving you, the water into this plant. My mind is like a garden. I want to make sure I'm putting in as much positive stuff as I possibly can. Will negativity pop, negativity pop up? Absolutely, 100% negativity will pop up in your mind. But when it gets there, it's like a weed. You have to pull it out and you have to remind yourself of what you're working towards and replace that negativity with positivity. So some of the most successful people I know are positive people and they're intentional about it. They weren't born that way. So ask yourself, what part of your self-talk needs improving? Okay, number seven, they don't worry about failure. I was on a, uh, a call about a week ago and somebody spoke up on the Zoom call and said, hey, how can we avoid, avoid failure? And I was like, why do you want to avoid failure? Because failure is actually your greatest learning lesson. They don't see failure as failure. They see it as falling. Failure, in my opinion, is only when you give up on something. You can't fail at something until you just, you're done. You give up. At that point in time, you have failed. But if you screw up and you screw up and you screw up, you screwed up. You didn't fail. It's like going, I want to be a basketball player, but I don't want to miss any shots. No, no, no. You have to miss shots because when you miss a shot, your brain, your body recalibrate and change and go, okay, that shot, it went a little bit off to the right. That means in this next time, I need to push a little bit to the left. If you look at people like Michael Jordan, missed half of the shots he took his entire career. If you look at people that are like that are incredible baseball players, the majority of baseball players strike out. If you're like an all-star, you strike out 70% of the time, which means that you fail, quote unquote, more than you succeed. You can't worry about failure. You have to see them. You have to learn from them. You have to grow from them. And so ask yourself, how can I learn more from my failures? And then the last one, this is the most important thing that I think, uh, well, I don't want to say most important. It is 
probably the most important thing that I can think about on the road to success. The people who I know that are most successful, they just don't stop. You could put a truck in their way. They're just going to keep going. They're going to figure out a way. They're going to go under it. They're going to go around it. They're going to go oh, like on top of it. They're going to dig a hole and, go, and, and create a, you know, a, a, a actual tunnel like Elon Musk under that thing. They're going to figure out a way to go around it. Instead of most people where they see, a, a, oh yeah, there's something, there's a roadblock. There's something in front of me. I don't know if I can do this. And then they just turn around and give up. They just don't stop. Successful people don't stop. You want to know the secret to success? Outlast everybody. Like I had, I had somebody, the same event that I was talking about where Patrick Bet David was there. I had a lady walk up to me and she's like, Hey, you know, the, one of these guys said that you have a big podcast. I just started my podcast a few months ago. What's the secret to it? And I go, she's like, you know, what's, how can the exact question was, how can I grow a podcast as big as yours? And I kind of chuckled and I was like, do 1400 episodes over the next seven and a half years, you'll win. And she's like, what? And I was like, just don't stop. Like, the, I know many people have started podcasts the same time I started podcasts and a lot of them gave up. I just decided when I started doing this thing, I will not stop. And if I don't stop, I will outlast everybody. I don't want to be the hare. I want to be the tortoise. I want to, I'm slow and I live by slow and steady wins the race. I am not competing against anybody else but myself and myself is yesterday. And yesterday I did what I was supposed to do. So today I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. Do you just give up too early on your goals? Lots of people are excited to start, but they give up. And so you've got to ask yourself, how often do you give up and how different would your life be if you just didn't stop? This new venture that you've been working on for the past few months, how different will your life be if you just do not stop? That is one of the biggest keys that people never talk about is just don't stop. Make your mind up and go. You're either going to succeed or you're going to die trying and that's it. And if you think of it that way, you'll succeed 100%. So that's what I got for you for today's episode. If you love this episode, please share it on your Instagram stories and tag me in at Rob Dial Jr., R-O-B-D-I-A-L-J-R. And if you love this podcast and you want this podcast to fill up your Instagram news feed with some positive, amazing stuff, we put a bunch of behind the scenes up. We put a bunch of clips up from this podcast. And you want to follow it on Instagram, go to The Mindset Mentor Podcast on Instagram. Once again, The Mindset Mentor Podcast. And I'm going to leave you the same way I leave you every single episode. Make it your mission to make somebody else's day better. I appreciate you and I hope that you have an amazing day.